Okay, so um, as you can see, I am recording. Uh, and recording screen. I can't record um, game capture itself because that's kind of hard for me. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Joby. Uh, yeah, I actually do call you Joby. Yes. That is the actual singer's name. John Bon Jovi. It's actually three names. So, yeah, I call you Joby. That's why. Um, <laughs> that is a distinct possibility. It's old enough. You might know. Okay, so basically, here's the scoop, noobs. Um, that's who this video is in. Okay, so you'll notice I'm in EM. This is the default chat channel. Um, sorry about the noise in the background. There's, there's a meeting going on here. Um, <laughs> completely unrelated. All of this stuff, you can go into filters, and you can actually filter all of this junk messages out. Literally, uh, the you attempt to, that is known as spam messages. That's what that's actually known as. If I go to my other list, you'll see I don't have spam messages named. I also don't have skill fails, skill attempts. Oh, no, wait, no, that was skill attempts. Sorry. Um, spam messages is, I think I'm missing something, stuff along that lines. Um, here we have the market channel. This is where everyone, as soon as it loads, um, posts buy and sell offers, literally. Buy and sell, right there. Uh, thank you, MitQ. I don't really know how to pronounce your name, but there you go. Um, so this is what it's going to look like, fresh off the boat. I'm just going to leave it here for now. Um, you get off a tutorial island, I'm on this boat, and you come here. This is door pad. You may only see a little view when you first get here. You can use the hotkeys. Make sure you load your mods. It's the second to last option is the one right above logout. Because when you don't have your mods loaded, this is your biggest view. And you can already see the difference. Already. Okay, it's obviously smaller, it's more narrow, it's limited, okay, and there's obviously a few problems with that, um, smallest of course being 7x7, seven seven. it's even smaller, but it's good for performance, um, there's window to full screen mode, if ever you have a problem, like let's say this number over here gets bumped over to here, um, that can be fixed with that, okay? Smoother interface, um, some people enjoy it, some people don't. Like when I'm on my phone, I don't enjoy smoother interface. It, it works terribly for me, okay? It really does. So I don't use it myself. Not there. On my computer, my computer kind of likes it, but not while I'm recording. Recording takes a lot. Okay, it really does. It, it takes a lot. If I actually pull up this, you can see I really, really am maxing everything. I wish I could dump some of this into the RAM because that would be great. But there's not really anything I can do about that. So, moving right along, um, a lot of people, they're like, they ask so many questions that are answered right there in Tutorial Island. Like, how do I cast magic? Well, there's a mod for that, actually, called AutoCast. If you load your mods, you will see one of them is actually AutoCast. And to load mods, literally, all you need to do is type forward slash mods, and it will pop up the window. Um, I was looking at the in-game wiki of decided to try that. But it will pop up this window. And you just select all, load selected. If it crashes or it just starts lagging horribly, close the game or refresh and open it back up and 
come back here and just start going through the list, specifically to find out which one did it. Now, a lot of people uh, have had problems with in-game wiki. Uh, some people have had problems with miscellaneous improvements. A few have even had problems with chat extensions, I think. Uh, very few. Damage, um, magic damage interface, not really necessary. I like it because I actually use magic. But if you don't use magic, you don't need it. Um, right click menu extensions. That's like the single most useful mod in the entire game. If you load none of the others, load that one in the in-game wiki and you are set. Okay, you'll need to ask for directions a lot, but you are set. <laughs> Okay, chat commands is for finding your way, mainly. Uh, chest interface. That allows you to actually, like, do more with your, your storage chest. Which, by the way, is universal, okay? Something on one end of the world map is going to be there in the chest on the other end of the world map. Okay, it doesn't matter which chest you put it in. Um, pet inventory. If I open my inventory, you'll see I have Pet's chest. Now, I currently have a griffin. Level 2 pet, leveled up from a baby griffin. I'm actually leveling up to a royal griffin because I'm selling royal griffins. <laughs> okay. And there's a person who's buying royal griffins. They're buying them for a lot of money. And I think it's worth my time. I'm just out there killing griffins anyway. I might as well. So, I'm going to go ahead and level them up for the money. Another thing that griffins are useful for is feathers. Okay, I cannot stress that enough. They are good for feathers. Right here we see, right click mod at work. Okay, here's the in-game wiki. I was leveling up a... I get baby griffins, I level them up to griffin, and then from there royal griffins. And the way I do that is I... Check wiki pet. Now you'll notice there's more options here than there were over here. So let's say I check this one. Okay, now it's telling me everything I need for this pet. 150,000 experience, to go from that to that, and then another 300,000 to go from that to that. Now, one thing to note the easy way to check this, I'll load that back up in a moment. Uh, yeah, the mod and wiki window can be moved, both on mobile and desktop. So, make a note of that. So, I look at this guy and it says pet experience. That tells me that I need experience right there. This is without mods, you can do this. You just equip your pet so that he looks like this. That little green arrow, that means that he's safe if I die. If I have, like, a full 40 items in my inventory, and he's not equipped, I can risk losing him. Because what it is, is it goes by this value number you keep seeing. It says 126,100 points. If I have uh, two items that are worth more than that, and I unequip this guy, and then I die, I lose him. Now, note, all my items that are at risk are here. Okay, this is an entirely separate inventory similar to your storage chest. It is safe, it is universal. If I go and I equip another pet, then it's going to have all of these items if it has that much space. If I only have three items in this pet, for example, we were looking at the Griffins a moment ago, you may have noticed one of them said that it only had two inventory. Uh, that would be the baby griffin. So if they had three items, I couldn't equip a baby griffin. But I could equip a griffin or a royal griffin. And then I could pull that one item out. And then I could switch to a baby griffin. So there's that. I can do that. That's something to note. Used to be you didn't need to pull the item out. But they did patch that. <laughs> there were people who were abusing it. Like carrying too much food in their pets and whatnot. It was, it was crazy. Um, so there's that. Okay, that's that's an equip uh, look is where it's yellow. 
You'll notice if I mouse over it, the yellow is drawn over with this blue. Now, if you're on mobile, that can happen sometimes where it just stays looking like that, even when you pull your mouse away or whatever. You start touching it all over the screen, and it's still blue over here, just some random square or something. That's okay. That's fine. It really doesn't matter. Um, enhanced market. That is very useful. Make sure you load that. Okay, because that's the player market. That's what people pay you and what you pay people in coins. Okay? You can't buy or sell moss on the market, but you can buy and sell the items that you spend the moss on. So make sure that you activate that on. Um, key binding extensions is only actually useful if you're not on mobile. Your screen mod, it's literally right there. And you can see in the tooltip, uh, if I can get it to pop back up again, <laughs> it makes, yeah, opens the gear menu from here. And basically it just shows you what slots you have, what gear you have equipped, and this section right here. The maximum speed is 60, everything else has no limit, literally. Okay, it's integer max. And specifically, the level isn't even the limit. It's the experience to next level. Next in, that reaches integer max, goes over it, server crashes. Okay, you try and load up a different server, you look at that again, server crashes. Actually, you don't even look at it. The server looks at it and crashes. So then, at that point, the developers would actually need to include some sort of bypass. Good luck reaching that, though, because that is over 4 billion, I think it is. Um, that would be somewhere around, like, level 2,000, 3,000. This game has been out for almost five years. No one has reached level 150 yet. Good luck. You're going to be no-lifing this for the next century trying to break that. Um, so, we've got a pet inventory. Uh, okay, auto-cast. There's the spells. That's the easy way to cast magic. Okay, you get into a battle and it starts casting for you. That easy. Okay, full screen mode. You saw that when I first started recording. Okay. By the way, the way I reach that menu is, uh, I can hit escape, but it's menu, game options. And then I have this menu, this is game menu, you want video, okay? That mod is this line. This line is not here until you load that mod. Um, it's been that version for a while now, but these are actually getting updated, and they are being, like, integrated slowly by the game developers. So, we've got that. Um, and I'll go ahead and do this. Now, one question that we get every now and then, it's not as common, but it's about the size. How do I make the game bigger? Yeah. A lot of people, they log on, and the game looks something like this. It's tiny. Okay. So, they're like, okay, how do I make a big game max size? That's what you want. As you could see, it went up to times 2.5, or 2.25, sorry. And I could stop it at 1.25, but I like 1.5. It looks better to me. And it actually fills in the whole thing. If I full screen, I want 1.75 because that is actually here to here, all the way. And it's nice. Um, one audio glitch is if you have sound effects on and music on, the music will play until a sound effect plays. And then the sound effect overrides the music for whatever reason, and then the music just goes quiet until you change areas. Or wait like 10 minutes. If you're in an area for 10 minutes, you're probably not paying attention to the music. So let's get started on where to go next. Close my inventory so I can move that direction. So that's the way I need to go. Um, that is actually the player J right over there. Um, work with me, work with me, inventory, work with me. 
It's kind of laggy because I'm recording. It doesn't like me recording one bit. Okay, so you got this guy, Fishing Instructor. He doesn't actually do anything. He just repeats the fishing segment of the tutorial island. So you can ignore him. Okay, over here we have the guy that sells archery gear. Make a note of that. If you're going to be an archer, you want that guy. That guy is your best friend for like your first 30, 40 levels of archery until you can actually start using better arrows. And can afford it, because archery is expensive because the feathers are expensive. And because the arrows that you can make with those feathers are so good, all the feathers are going to be expensive. And another reason that it's so expensive is because everybody wants feathers. People pay 2,000 coins per feather. Now, granted, each feather can make an arrow last for like uh, 10 uses, I think it is. I'm not really familiar with archery, don't quote me on that. I don't even look into the bronze arrows, okay? <laughs> um, this guy is the magician. He'll sell spells, he sells a magic pouch should you manage to lose yours. Um, he sells a teleport that takes you back to here, so if you really are absolutely horrible at directions, you can just buy a teleport from this guy for 1,000 coins. Note, it does give you magic experience to use a teleport scroll. Um, a lot of people wander over to this guy thinking, oh, I need a new weapon. So they come over to here because he's the weapon merchant. He does not sell, period. That's why people have a problem. He does not sell. He actually buys. This guy makes stuff. He is the blacksmith. This is where you get all of your bronze. I'm sorry about that beeping. There's a, some timer going off. I'm actually recording this from a McDonald's. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where my Wi-Fi comes from. I go, uh out to McDonald's. Otherwise, I'm on my phone, okay? So I can't usually open links, I can't usually record these videos because I can't actually record anything. I'm not on Wi-Fi. I don't have home Wi-Fi. I come here. It's a 30-minute hike each way. It's really difficult. It's hot out. So this guy, he sells a pickaxe and hammer for mining and forging. Um, he sells copper and tin, which allows you to make bronze. Um, he'll uh, buy bronze bars, which do not sell a lot of your stuff to NPCs. The only things that I actually recommend you sell to NPCs would maybe be the bone armor, but that might actually sell well in the player market because it's so rare. Um, but the bronze, okay? Anything that this guy sells, no one's going to buy it. It's that simple. Okay, if people can come here and pay 644 for a, for a bronze plate mail, do you really think they're going to come to you and pay a thousand coins? No. They might pay 500. They might pay 400. But they're not going to pay any more than they can afford here. Okay? Um, that ladder leads to where you can mine copper and tin. Um, you can also mine clay down there, and next to the clay is the fishing spot for a cage. Uh, this guy is very useful. Oh, there's hens, there's chickens. Make a note, if you need a fishing rod, you can get one from a hen, not a chicken. They have different drops, uh, different drop tables. So, uh, make a note, you can right-click them, and you can actually see what they drop. You can do a combat analysis, which could save your character's life. You know, you might find out, oh, you know, let's run a combat analysis. Let's see what this guy does. Well, you run a combat analysis, and you find out, oh, this guy can take me out in, like, two hits. I probably shouldn't fight him. Maybe I'll find something a little bit weaker. <laughs> you know? There we go. Yeah, two damage. Now, you'll notice that is two damage with 1.9% chance to hit. Look at my defense up here. That's my modified defense. It says 80. That's because he's giving me some armor. Okay, he's giving me 15 armor. That is five extra points of defense. 
uh, because armor is three to one, power is two to one, and aim is two to one. Uh, they transform into their relative stats. So aim is accuracy, power is strength, and of course armor is defense. The thing is, defense in this game is actually evasion. So let's look at what this guy has, Questmaster NPC. We can see there's a few other players on. I am on the premium world recording this. Um, I am in the U.S. This is a U.S. server. The other U.S. server is World 8. Um, world time maintenance varies. There's a chat command for that. It's listed in forward slash help. Okay. I apologize if it gets noisy. Again, I am recording at a McDonald's. <laughs> So you can't really blame me too much. So you can see I have 369 points. These are quest points. Okay, and depending on the quest points I have, I can get different uh, tasks. I currently have one for 25 long swords. I've done 14 of them. It's kind of quiet in here. Figured I'd start recording. <laughs> um, there's forging iron helmets. Crafting 20 cactus wood walls, it looks like. Ah, there's Shinny Lolly. You would decimate me in a PvP, so I'm never going to go into the wilderness while you're there. Um, yeah, it says 27k. Sounds great until you realize that each wall is about 1,500 logs. Yeah, go ahead. Do the math on that. Do the math. Feel free. I don't need to know it. All I know is I'm never going to take that quest. Um, <laughs> chicken legs. Cooking chicken legs. 18 experience. Now, you'll notice some of these say experience, some of these say coins. That's not the only option. There is also item rewards and moss rewards uh, sometimes. And they'll be listed right here. Complete with an icon. You can just mouse over. It'll pop up in the tooltip what it's doing, what it is. And um, the experience... For example, this is a cooking quest, so this will come out in cooking experience. This is a mining quest, so it's mining experience. Uh, you'll notice there's a fishing quest here. Be very careful of these fishing quests, because these have a tendency to come back and bite you in the behind. Okay? Um, with fishing, it is completely possible to actually not be able to catch that fish again. For example, raw salmon, or is this cooking quest? It's cooking. Okay, so for the cooking quest, I can just buy the fish from this guy right here. Okay, but for that fishing quest, remember, raw salmon. Okay, they want me to catch 150 raw salmon. I could go over here and purchase the perch, sure. Okay, you can see, if I move eventually, this guy does sell perch, and I can purchase it and then just cook it on this campfire right here, just like you learned in the tutorial. Okay? And one thing really big to know. Keep these raw pearl clams. There's a reason that their in-game wiki value is 4,000. They may be level 1 fishing, but they are the best cooking item in the entire game. Nothing competes. Okay? We're talking four digits. 1250. 1250 experience each. That is a lot. Okay? Considering frogs are like five. <laughs> Compare that for a moment in your head. Just sit there going, uh -huh. carry the one, carry the next one, carry that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Okay, so if I check out the fish drops, remember, they wanted us to catch 150 salmon, raw salmon. Okay, so let's check out raw salmon. Let's see, deep sea octopus, I can't catch that, can't catch that, can't catch that. Ah, here we go, we're starting to get into my skill range. Okay, 30, 13, 
fifteen. Where's that Sam? Oh, there it is. Three point four nine percent chance to catch it. Which means out of a hundred, or we'll say a thousand times fishing, I would only catch thirty-five out of a thousand fish. That's terrible. Okay, so let's keep going. Sunken treasure. That is below 0.001%. Or no, wait. Below 0.005. Because it rounds. Well, in this case, it's rounding down. Because it is below 0. 0. 0.005. Um, otherwise, it would say 0. 0.001. Or, sorry, 0 0.01. Um, raw pike, raw sardine, raw trout, raw pearl clam. I'm sure you can see what I'm talking about when I say hold on to your pearl clams. 100% cooking chance is level 80 cooking. Please don't try it before then. You will just make so many people who actually know what's going on. It's just so hard for me. Okay, there is a chance to get them from a sunken treasure, but as you can see, that chance goes down pretty fast. Okay, I'm not even able to use an iron fishing rod yet, which is level 65 fishing, I think it is, or maybe it was 55. I'm a few levels away. Uh, yeah, 65. So, um, yeah, I've, I've done quite a bit, but um, I'm not even at 100 yet on most things or anything. I'm barely at halfway on half of this stuff. Um, as you can see, I barely have a million coins. There's the anvil. Let's talk pets. Obviously, I have a griffin. You go to the anvil. There's the chest, indoor pad. That's the town that you get spawned in, your very first town. Um, there's that. Come over here to the anvil and look just northeast. You will see the Dorpat Pet Trader NPC. Um, there's the furnace. By the way, you can right-click things just like I did for the fishing rod uh, fishing spot. Um, by the way, the net is actually just down here off the bottom of the screen. So that's where that is. Um, there's cows over this way. Got chickens over this way. Um, there's a find chat command that you can use. It's very useful. Um, you can use it to find pretty much anything if it has a marker in here in your mini map. You'll see that my mouse over the mini map it reads the name of the map, door path. Um, there's my position. There's my experience per hour. My world. My current quest. This is where you actually find out the creature that you are hunting in your kill quests. Now, when you come here, you will see all of this and you'll be like, oh, there's some good stuff here. I can buy a dog, level it up to a wolf. Okay, I can sell nagas. I can buy a donkey or one of these other donkeys. What's the difference? Well, look carefully. This donkey requires 12 health to equip right there, okay, and then he has four inventory slots, he only gives you five speed, ten armor. I'm going to tell you right now, this guy's only use is, is breeding training, okay, to be a breeder for breeding pets. You can get some great pets that way, but it is so monotonous, okay, it's repetitive. It's boring. Okay. It makes farming look interesting. And it takes so much money. It really does. It's crazy. Then we have the jewelry donkey, first grade. That means he's level one. Okay. These four skill donkeys, they're actually skill equipped donkeys. That's their full name. This guy requires level 20 jewelry skill. That is for. Oh, howdy. I'm recording. Um, so that is for uh, making jewelry, like necklaces and rings. Um, he gives 15 speed, and they all start, they all give the same speed, they all have uh, 8 inventory to start. 
as they level up, they get more. They have three levels. Level 2 has 12 inventory. Level 3 has uh, 16 inventory. Um, the dogs, they're decent starter combat pets if you really can't find anything else. But the actual starter combat pet you're going to want... Okay, this is going to be the actual one that you want. And it says skill required to equip, because we're in the item menu. Uh, we're looking by name for this. So we look at the skill needed, health. Okay, it needs health. How much does it need? 38. And we look at its stats, and this thing is actually a really good combat for when you start out. The problem is they kind of have a problem staying in stock. Um, 52 power, which at uh, 2 power is 5 strength and 5, or sorry, 2 power is 1 strength, 5 strength is 1 max damage. That means that for every 10 power, it's 1 max damage. That means that it is plus 5 max damage, along with offering you almost 10 armor, almost 10 defense, I mean. And it has 5 inventory to hold extra food or whatever. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a breed result, which means that it doesn't level up. So it's just level 1, straight up. Um, that's not going to be the price you're going to be paying, unfortunately. It's probably going to be maybe close to like 500k, maybe 340. It really does depend on the person selling it. Some people might even go 200k. Um, I think that's the current common price is 200k. Um, half of that is what the NPC that will buy it will actually pay. Um, if you cannot find an NPC that buys something, um, then you would need to take the item out to the far end of no man's land, risk getting killed by another player in order to sell the item for 40% of its value. Now, we went over earlier, um, items being safe. Anything that's not safe when you're killed by a player out in no man's land or similar areas, um, you lose. Not only that, the player that killed you gets that item. So I'm going to open my chest here and close that in. And I'm going to show you how to sell. Now, let's pick something easy, something simple. Okay, um, let's say I want to sell... What's something I have? Well, I could sell... I could sell a lot of this stuff, actually. I... Well, there's the souls. Okay, these are used to craft teleport potions. I want to see if someone has uh, some of these souls posted, because... I actually craft these potions and sell them on the market to people who don't feel like raising their magic stat. These all give magic experience. The teleport potions do not. So you'll notice I just right-clicked it to open the context menu and I picked buy this item. And it's taking a minute to load. Okay, it loaded. There's no offers. This is blank. But you can see item count price player. That's because um, if there is an offer, like let's say, like clay usually has an offer. Let's see what people are buying clay for. Let's sell some clay. Okay. And I click it, and it takes a moment to load because I'm recording. Oh, that guy, that's a Santa sleigh. That is an event item. He's rare. Okay, apparently no one is buying clay. They're apparently all selling it. So, um, 
How about bars? I'm having a hard time actually finding something that I may or may not want to buy. Oh, I know what I can sell. I see it right there. Sharp beaks. It's an alchemy ingredient. So let's see if people are buying iron bars first. <clears throat> they are. Okay. So let's say I like this guy's price. Well, okay. If I mouse over it and I'm on the computer, I can actually see the little pop up there. And it's decent. It's not quite full wiki value, so it's cheaper than an NPC, but he's paying more than half, so it's more than I get at an NPC. But, but let's say I don't like that guy. I don't know who that guy is, but let's say I don't like him. Okay, so what about the next offer? Do I like his price? Maybe I do. Maybe I like that guy. Maybe I have some reason for picking his offer over the top offer. Because the top offer will always be your best offer, whether you're buying or selling. If you're selling, it will give you the most money. If you're buying, it will be the lowest price. Okay, so let's say I only want a few. I could, you know, type it in here. Or maybe I just want to give him everything. Just hit max, and I can see how much I would get. Then all I have to do is just click sell, and it will instantly give me my money. Alternatively, let's say none of these offers are enough. Okay, I can come over here and I can make a new offer. But first, I'm going to want to know my competition. Okay, what's my competition? Let's say I'm doing it with these. Sharp beaks. You can also see how you get them. Okay, so... Someone is obviously buying these, so we'll look at their price, okay. Loading, loading, loading. Now this is me playing it on Firefox. I was hoping it would actually run better here. It seems to be okay. I can't vouch for how it actually looks on your end yet, because I won't know that until I post it. I increase the resolution and I decrease the frame rate. Okay, so this guy's paying 65. It says wiki value is 60. That's not bad. Um, these guys are both paying wiki value. So this guy, I, I actually like his offer because I'm getting more bang for my buck. Okay, and he refreshed it four hours ago, it looks like. Um, note that you only get 24 hours for any offer. So this guy, he posted this yesterday. It's about to expire. Um, and then there's this guy about half a day ago. Okay. Now, clearly this guy didn't know, possibly, he actually probably did by that point, that he was being undercut by five points by this guy right here. So, um, that's, that's something. Uh, you can also see information about the item if you're on PC. Otherwise, you have to go all the way back. Uh, you might even have to actually withdraw the item. Um, by the way, that is my available inventory slots right there. With those skill equipped donkeys from that guy right there, uh, that actually becomes a grand total with a level 3 donkey on an empty inventory, just the donkey equipped. I get 55. Okay, so let's say we're wanting to sell these sharp beaks for more than that 65 offer. Well, there aren't any better offers. So let's see what our competition is. There is none. Okay, so we get to set the precedent. We get to set the level. Now, I could go into that market channel and ask them, hey, what's a good price for sharp beaks? Um, I've heard up to 200 is a good limit, but I actually already have a full market. Um, I'm selling tomatoes because uh, Joseph, the person who normally loves to buy tomatoes, he has like almost 2 million tomatoes by this point, his offer expired. So I'm charging him double. <laughs> I always do that. When his offer expires, and I get tomatoes, in this case, I got 195. So I 
just I'm selling them for a hundred. Because sometimes he pays fifty, sometimes he pays twenty. I'm charging him a hundred. If he wants them, they're here. If he doesn't. I'll probably eventually get bored of just trying to post them and just sell them straight to it. Okay. Um, oh, you have one of the steeds. Good to know. Yeah. Um, there is a signpost, by the way, for those of you who do get lost and know how to follow signposts. There's a signpost right there, road sign. It says it's even an NPC. Um, this way leads to Dorprat Outpost. It actually keeps going that way and then hooks. Like, way over here. Um, I tend to sell noob jewelry. So, seriously, if, if you want any low-level jewelry, it's a good price. Considering, like, what I use to make it. I made it fair. I have a tendency to buy out the competition. Um, I sell... Teleport scrolls, 10% markup. As you can see, value 5,000. So, you know, it's just a 10% markup. It's not crazy. Uh, you can buy them from the NPC, but the problem is you have to go there first. <laughs> and that, well, that's a long hike. Okay, I could look it up there, but it'd take forever because everything's lagging. Um, but basically, you click on that. And then, if you have your mods loaded, right in this area will be a button that says World Map. You click that, and it'll show you an entire World Map. Make a note of the door path, Dungeon 1, and Dungeon 2 region. Because that is a very complex cave network, and they don't have arrows. They actually have letters and numbers. There's so many entrances. From door path to Dungeon 1, it's five entrances. From Dungeon 1 to Dungeon 2, I think, is another four. So, you know, you can see now how to actually work the market. Um, here I have a few other feathers. I don't have chicken feathers on me. Um, they're just like called feathers, because griffins drop them too. But you can see I have quite a few different things. This is the best jewelry experience you can get for quite a long while, by the way. Make a note of that recipe. I'll show you that. Uh, that combination in a bit. There's the iron fishing rod. Uh, there's a harpoon, wooden harpoon. We got carrots. We got all kinds of different potions, jewelry. Here's my equipment. My tools. All kinds of neat stuff in here. So you'll notice I have like a lot of white gold necklaces. I got another griffin lined up for when this one's done. Um, and I also have. A jewelry donkey, third grade, it's a level three. And you can see right there, 16 inventory. And its value is actually higher than the ones in that store right there. Um, this is the farmer. He'll sell you your island deed, your rake, and your seeds. Now, he only has a third of the seeds. The next farmer is in Narwa, and the one after that is actually in Wyland, which, or Wieland, however you want to pronounce it. Um, but he is actually in the next area over in the southern tip of this map. Like way down here on the mini map. Um, so, yeah. But you go all the way down here and then you actually go into the next area and then he's like right there. So, yeah. <sighs> then we have spells. The first town you'll want to visit after Dorpat is actually the one that sells Fire Missile, I think it is. No, wait. Fire Bolt. I had it right the first time. Okay, Fire Bolt. Um, they are actually, on the mini-map, way up here, and there's a zone, like, right here. Not to be confused with this zone, which is actually, uh, Mosh 1. Um, you want the second one, which is way in the northern tip, and it'll have a cactus next to it also. Um, but you go all the way up there, you go in, and now you're in this desert area. You go all the way along the southwestern wall to the west corner, and there's a town there. That is Revolve. Okay, that's where you're going to want to go for 
iron. Remember, this guy sells bronze. Iron is in revolve. Okay. Rack blood, which is on the other side of Wyland, the one that was way down here, they are actually the ones for steel. Again, sorry about the noise. Um, there's a few different things, but that's the basics. If you lose your tools, go in this ladder that was up here that I pointed at quite a while ago, and they actually have tool crates in there that you can break for various tools. It's not a 100% drop rate, but hey, what do you want? It's free. <laughs> okay. Um, here we have the furnace. This is where you smelt your ores in case you didn't pay attention one iota to the tutorial that you were forced to do last I checked. Um, here's the anvil where you forge the bars into various weapons and armors. Or you can actually practice fletching if you have the materials. Again, reach that in a moment. Um, Unless you're trying to make arrows. Arrows can only be made, I actually have to go into the world map for this. In Mosh 2, the easiest way to get to the specific spot you need to go to in Mosh 2. Here we can see that world map button I mentioned earlier. By the way, uh, Mining Guild is there. That's iron. Uh, there's another dungeon entrance there, another dungeon entrance there, and there's, of course, the one I pointed out earlier there. That is Wyland, that is Rafal, that's Mosh 1, and that's a place called Walco. It's got a bunch of undead, and it leads to the Devil's Triangle, which is a very dangerous place. Uh, see? Walco. There's Devil's Triangle. Just look at that map. That is a bunch of teleports, and they are all kinds of mixed up, okay? You can see right there. You go down, you go down, you go down, and then you go down again, and you're there. And then you walk back through, and you're back at the center. Now, that only works for that, <laughs> okay? There are places where you can just endlessly go down, and you're walking in circles. Okay, I had to teleport out at one point. Um, I usually teleport out. No man's land. That is player versus player. For all you who want to do PvP, that's your place right there. That place is, uh, that area is pretty much safe as can be. And that is where the NPC that buys anything for 40% is. There's another one right about there, but he only pays 10%. That's where you make arrows. That is the only public spot in the game. The other way to do it is to buy an island deed and either craft your own table, buy it off of the player market, or have someone make it for you. Put it on your island, put a chest next to it so you can reach your materials, and then just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Otherwise, you're going from there to there, to there, to there, to there, to there. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And if you're not going to that one, you're going to that one. Which, I'm not sure which one's faster. You're going to mine sand, which is another good alternative. You want to go there, the vault. Um, that's where you buy the mining guild permit. Remember I mentioned the mining guild? Which is like right here on the mini-map. Actually, I didn't intend to close the world map just yet. Um, you'll notice there's this N right here. A lot of people think this is north. A lot of people think this is north. I'm going to follow the compass. Cardinal directions. You know? If I say north, I mean, boom, north. Like, that way. Not that way. Okay? This is north to me, not this. So when I say, you know, southwest wall, I mean, like, boom. Which, by the way, that's about where Revol is on that map. Um, all of these icons, you can actually mouse over them for info, but because I'm lagging, you kind of can't. There's Willow, Steel Harpoon, there's a few different spots of interest. That's actually what they're called, points of interest. Here you have Tutorial Island, that's where you start. You actually start right there. Um, I think you get one safe depth, just one. Um, every Man's Land, that is the secret cow level, for those paying attention. Um, 
there is a Cow King. He drops a secret boss scroll, and it allows you to fight certain bosses. And I haven't killed any bosses yet. Just a heads up. They're kind of beefy. Um, here we have Dungeon 1. There's the Mining Guild. There's Under Door Pad. Uh, there's the Iron Entrance, I do believe. Can't really see too well because I'm nearsighted, but it's that one on the map. So if that's that one, then yeah, that's iron. You should put the iron right there because you just oh, there you go. Uh, make sure you check out that wiki page because there's a really good, well thought out, lots of pictures, lots of information wiki page all about iron that does not need a steel pickaxe. You do not need a steel pickaxe to mine iron. To mine coal, you want to come all the way through Wyland. Uh, actually, you want to take this route. Uh, and then go through here. And coal is right here. But to get out, you have to come out through up here. And there's a uh, bronze golem right there. And most of this stuff is just passive in this area. But, you know, watch your step. And you come around and you come in. There's another fishing NPC right there. He's not actually in the town. He's around the outside and down a little ways. Then, um, a lot of people wonder where rock spirits are. They're in here. Okay, that's simple. And then you come over here, you travel your way through this very dangerous area to Narwa. That's where those teleports lead all the way. <laughs> <laughs> all of this, people will pay me fifty five hundred for a five thousand coin teleport. They'll pay that five hundred extra just because they don't want to hike all the way to there, because that is where the wooden harpoon fishing spot is, right there. And this is also a good spot for making fire spells, because you come in through over here, and here you need hell access, and here you need heaven access. By the way. The cape sold by the magician guy here covers both. Um, so you come here and you come over to town, get geared up for the trip. You're gonna have to fight some dragons along the way, maybe a few others, uh, a few other creatures like uh, fire vipers, I think it is. If you uh, aren't over twenty, if you aren't twenty or more levels over their combat level, that's the only thing used by combat level. Okay, if you paid attention this far, congratulations. It's a long video, I know. I'm probably going to chop it up later and upload it in bits and pieces and label them all individually and everything. But combat level is your sum total. I'm a combat level 85. But as you can see, none of my stats are even 85. That's actually rather common. Actually, almost none of the players online will actually have their combat level reflect their actual combat effectiveness. Okay? Um, there's Cathedral or Cap. Um, there's Void, which is reachable from Clouds or Blood River. They have Fire Tower, Nature Tower, and Ice Tower. Nature is easiest. Um, I forget the other two. Uh, that is where the Blood Eagle is. They're an achievement. It's an achievement to kill that guy. I think, like, I think I asked earlier, and one to three people mentioned that they had killed it. Uh, there were about probably 50 people in the chat room. Do the math. Uh, chat is across all servers. It is channel-based. It's not server-based, not world-based. It's just universal. Whoever's in that chat. Uh, you'll notice I was in multiple. Uh, this is a good island for training when you're capable of really easily killing the griffins, which I killed here or here. Um, just basically this whole area, really. Um, this area is kind of dangerous. There is a... Willow Harvest Point right there, I do believe. Uh, that's the best spot for gold right there. Just under that V, actually. Right there. Um, it's a vein, so make sure you bring a steel pickaxe. That's what requires the steel pickaxe, is a vein. 
It's guarded by one of those fire vipers from over here. But if you enter from this side and not this side, it's easier. That's the jewelry guild. Okay. A lot of these guilds do not have a chest. Make a note of that. Because it kind of sucks. Um, next up, I'm going to try and cover enchantments. Okay, a lot of players ask, how do I enchant? Because they just don't know. Straight up, they don't know. Okay. And I'm just hammering through this one after another. I know, it's a bumpy ride, but hey, someone's got to do it. And, um... You'll notice this hasn't changed. Um, this is actually because I haven't gotten any new experience, so it can't really measure. But at the rate I was going, I was actually looking to level up within 20 minutes. I cannot sustain that because I would run out of materials. But eh, for 14, that's not bad. No. Um, so... There's those swords. I would sell those in Revolve, by the way. <laughs> also, this is sold in Revolve, and if you don't feel like going all the way to Revolve, which is the best place to actually use it, you can also buy one at Doorpath Outpost. Um, where is my hammer? I need my hammer. Okay. So, I have my hammer. I'm going to draw it. Hopefully it's selected. Yes, it is. Okay. So I have my hammer. I want my inventory also. And let's say I want all I have that's different between the two is weapon. I'll just skip it. But basically, one thing to note is it helps if I equip it. Um, when you attempt the enchantment. Unless it has a little green arrow there, or a little green cube there. Um, when you attempt the enchantment, all the items involved in the enchantment itself get eaten. Okay? If you have an orb of luck, then it gets eaten. If you have two orbs of luck, they get eaten. If you have three orbs of luck involved in it, they get eaten. If you use a low jewelry scroll for your enchantment of some jewelry item, it gets eaten. So does the jewelry item, by the way. If you use a high one, it gets eaten. Okay? Superior, it gets eaten. It doesn't really matter which one it is. It doesn't matter what you do. You got the item, the scroll, and the orbs. Orb of luck. That's what goes there. Up to three. Three. They each will add 10% to the success rate of the enchant. So, if something is only 70% success on a superior enchant scroll, you can add those three orbs of luck and make it 100% chance. You will not fail. Guaranteed. And you may be thinking, well, why doesn't everyone do that? It's crazy expensive. Okay? For starters, they're sold in the Moss store, which you may have heard that earlier. Moss. What is Moss? Well, it is... Um, basically, RPG ammo is a solution to premium currency. And as you can see, I've got some moss. I haven't actually bought any. I have not paid a single cent. That is all earned. Okay, I've done so many different things to earn it. I've played party quests. I've played different quests from that guy. He'll give me moss. And you can see there's quite a few different items. There is an achievement for storing up a thousand. So I'm going to get that. And if I have 4,200, which um, that would be about $42, because one moss is about equal to one penny. So that's $42. That is a 10 pack of double experience potions. That is how you trigger the double experience event. They also sell them individually for 500. If you do the math, 10 of the 500s would cost 5,000. So that's actually 800 off. You buy nine with a discount on the ninth, and you get one free. That's not bad. I'm wanting the multi tool. It contains everything except for the chisel, mortar, and pestle, and needle. 
The needle is used for making cloth, the mortar and pestle for grinding things for various alchemy mainly, and sometimes uh, pet breeding, and the chisel for cutting gems, which it's useful, but you know, it, it's, it's not really needed. This guy buys miscellaneous items. Um, so does the guy over at Dorpad Output. This guy, I think, is an alchemist, if I recall correctly. Um, jeweler. He's the jeweler. Um, one thing to note. Those market listings earlier for jewelry, that guy does not sell those items. That one, A, only deals in silver, and B, the ones that he does sell, I don't sell. The ones that the next guy sells up in Reval, the guy, place where you go to buy iron, they do gold also, but they don't sell the ones that I sell either. So, that's something to note. You can see certain gems, there's a lot of some and not a lot of others, such as sapphire. <laughs> um, sapphire is a rather unloved gem. <laughs> Um, people at the 50 range, I believe, they actually tend to wear sapphire armor. It might have been 60. I'd have to look it up. But, um, I actually have some sapphire gear, so I can look it up momentarily. You gotta remember to really just look up stuff. Because that's really where the meat of everything is. Yeah, 50 defense, right there. You can see it's 50 armor. That's not bad. Um, you'll notice not everything I have is silver. And some stuff I have more than one, like gloves. I have sapphire gloves. Um, sorry if I said silver a moment ago. I have sapphire gloves. And they're nice. Aim, armor, defense, uh, required. It doesn't actually give defense directly. It gives armor. Almost 10 points. But then I also have these steel gloves. And these give power. That's why I still have them. I have multiple wings. I have a cloak. I have multiple hats. I'm sure you're going to be selling that one. I'm still recording. Um, and these boots, they're known as speed boots. Now, I have the second tier. The first tier is level 5 equipped requirement. They give 30 speed. Remember, the maximum is 60 speed. We went over that in the beginning. Um, they're only level 5 defense required. So they're actually pretty good. A lot of people ask, is fishing a viable income? And not really. But it's useful because, as you can see, you know, I got a lot of fish. I haven't done much combat recently, so it kind of built up. I've been doing alchemy, so I got a lot of potions. There's one of those teleport potions I mentioned. Um, as soon as it loads the information, there it is. Revolve. It teleports to Revolve. It does not give magic experience. This is a very important potion because this is actually equipment. Um, keep five extra items on death when equipped. Now, that's because normally you only keep two extra items other than your equipped pet and whatever it holds. And of course, your chest is safe because it's not your inventory. Just your inventory is at risk. Um, with this equip, you get an extra five, so that three becomes eight. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so that whole row could be safe, plus the little potion of preservation being equipped here. It does get used when you die. Um, you can see obtained by craft, drop, present of a certain type, or moss. Yeah, greater best book. Um, they're actually fairly cheap. You can look up what the current values are now. Um, I'm not sure if there's been a bidding war lately, if demand has been high, so it's good to actually keep up on this one because this is a very useful item. I mean, just do the math on this. If five pieces of my armor are worth less than this one item, then that's useful. Um, my plate mail, I think, is worth like a million, maybe two million. I'm not really even sure one plate bit. Oh, yeah. So 
98,000 to 100,000. About 100,000 on average. That's not bad. Um, that's wiki, isn't it? Yeah, it's equal to wiki. So that's not bad at all, actually. Um, so pretty much, do I have five items worth 100,000 or more combined? Yes, yes, I do. I have a lot of them worth over 100,000. So if I go out hunting something, I might die. I want to bring that. Big time. Um, one thing to note, event items. They're usually priced at one point. So they aren't going to be uh, saved because they're only worth one coin, according to the wikia. Or wiki, sorry, not wikia. Wikia is the one that you go to off website. Very useful. Make sure you make use of it. Um, anyway, I'm going to cut here. My next take is going to be trying to get some better frame rate on the farming guide, which I don't really see happening because, well, <laughs> as you can tell, it's kind of laggy. I might have to try going back over to Steam. I might have to try doing it with just the farming queue mod. I'll poke around. So there's that. Um, anyway. Blue 64, peace out. Don't mind the Riker looking beard from uh, after season one of Star Trek. Uh, stop.